Sarah with Posh Pooch Designs and today's video I'm going to show you how to make this washcloth. I call it the Christmas candy striped washcloth because I made it in candy stripes. It's a little bit of a wave pattern. Measures about eight and a half by eight and a half inches and they make great Christmas gifts. As a matter of fact, I'm making some of these in a set of two to make, uh, to give us a Christmas gift. I made one like this in the red and white with the green edge. And today for our display, or our demonstration, I'm gonna make it in green and white with a red edge. They're the perfect size to use as a washcloth, a face cloth, or one to use in the kitchen to do the dishes. They're a lot of fun, and you can add an applique or button if you want to, but I just think they look great, just like this. This one is made out of I Love This Cotton from Hobby Lobby, and I bought a green, a red, and a white for our project, and I think it works up just great. Now, I you can use... Um, any of the peaches and cream or any of the other cottons, they all work great. But I just really love this because it is so soft and it washes up really nice. And the neat thing about cotton washcloths is they always work better after you've washed them once because it's like the water has soaked up and then it's soaked up and then it's dried. And now they work really great and are very absorbent. So we're going to be using these colors today. We're going to make one in green and white with a red edge. And what you're going to need is an H hook today. And you'll need a needle for weaving in your ends. And of course, scissors for cutting. Now this is a free pattern on my blog. And I'll have that link for you in the notes underneath the video. So grab you some cotton. And remember, even though this is a Christmas one, you can do this in any colors that you want. You could even do it in a solid. So any cotton will work. Just grab you some cotton, doesn't take much, and give it a try. Now I made this one in red and white with a green edge. And so you begin on this edge with red. Um, but I'm going to do a green and white one. So we're going to begin with green. And the first thing you need to do is make your slip knot and then chain 31 chains. And that's the width of our washcloth or dishcloth. Either one is fine because you can use it anywhere in the bathroom, in the kitchen, on your face, on your dishes, on your counter, whatever you want to use it for because it's a great size. So we're going to chain 31 chains. And just a note about chaining an edge, if you are a tight crocheter, today we're using an H hook, you may want to go up to uh, a, a uh, I hook just for the chain portion, because if you chain too tightly, it will pucker on you and you don't want that. All right, so we've chained our 31 chains and we're going to begin our little bit of a wave stitch. And the way we do this, is we're going to stitch two single crochets, two double crochets, two singles, two doubles, two, all the way across. So we're going to skip our first chain and begin working in our second chain. And we're going to put one single crochet in the second chain. And then we're going to put one single crochet in the next chain. So we have two single crochets. The next stitch we're going to make is a double crochet. So we're going to place a double crochet in the next two double crochets. And now we're going to repeat what we did. All the way across, we're going to place one, two single crochets, one single crochet in the next two chains, and then one, two double crochets, one double crochet in the next two chains. And you'll get a little bit of a wave stitch. And we'll do this all the way across, two singles, two doubles, two singles, two doubles, until we reach the end of our chain.
So we completed this row. We stitched two singles, two doubles, two singles, two doubles, two singles, two doubles, all the way across our chains. Now we're going to chain one and turn. And um, the way row two is, is it's stitched the same. The only thing that's different is we're going to place two double crochets and then or one double crochet in each of the next two singles and then one single crochet in the next two doubles and we'll repeat that and you need to make sure that you're you're stitching double crochets in single crochets and single crochets and double crochets so the first two stitches are single so we're going to stitch one double crochet in the first stitch and one double crochet in the next the next two stitches are doubles and so we're going to stitch a single in those two stitches and we'll do this all the way across one double crochet in the next two single crochets and one single crochet in the next two double crochets and we'll go all the way across this row just like that. In, in the two double crochets, you stitch single crochets. In the two single crochets, you stitch double crochets. So we're now at the end of row two. We stitch two doubles in the singles and two singles in, or in the doubles so that we have two single, two double, two single, two double all the way across just like we did the first row, only it's in the opposite stitches. One single in the first two doubles, one double in the first two singles, one single in the next two doubles, all the way across. And now it's time to change colors. Now, do not cut your yarn because we're going to be switching every two rows. We're going to be carrying our yarn. And when we put the edge on at the end, we'll stitch across those places where we carry the yarn. So we have our white yarn we're going to add in. So we're just going to put a loop in, snug that down, and chain one, and then snug that down. And you'll be carrying those yarns across. And we'll be doing it every two rows, so all your carries will be on this end. And we're going to do this row exactly like we did the last row, only the opposite. Meaning um, we're going to begin with singles instead of beginning with doubles. And so uh, the first two stitches are doubles, and so we're going to stitch a single in those. These next two stitches are singles, and so we're going to stitch a double in each of those. And the, the way to get this pattern to always work is make sure you're stitching a single in a double stitch and a double stitch in a single stitch. <laughs> and that's how we're going to get our wave pattern. And as we stitch along this row, we're stitching exactly the same, two single crochets in the top. It's one single crochet in each of the doubles and one double crochet in each of the singles. There we go. And you can see the wave is, is showing on the white. It's not a great big wave, it's just enough to make it fun. And you're going to do this for this row and the next row. You'll put singles and doubles and doubles and singles. And you'll do this across for this row. You'll chain one and turn and then bring it back over. Doing the same thing, one single in the top of each double, one double in the top of each single. So the second row, or I should say the fourth row, has been completed. We did two rows of green and then two rows of white. <clears throat> and let me just clarify just so that you understand. You always place one double crochet in the top of the two single crochets and then you'll place one single crochet in the top of the two double crochets and the pattern is 
two single, two double, two single, two double, all the way across, and then we turn, and it's two double, two single, two double, two single, and that's how the wave is created. And now we're going to um, change back to our green yarn, and the way we do that, because our yarn is still attached, we want to join our yarn before we do our chain one. And so we're gonna grab that yarn, and we're gonna make sure it lays nice and flat, snug that down, we can always pull it a little, and then make our chain one. And give it a little tug, make sure that it's not drooping and that it's not tight. Then when we come back around, when we're finished with all of our stripes, we're going to single crochet over those when we do the trim. And then you're going to repeat these rows, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. You're going to have 20 rows, 10 rows, one, two, three, four, five rows of green, and one, two, three, four, five rows of white. And that will give you 10 um, rows, but it will be 20 rows of stitching. It'll be 10 stripes, 20 rows of stitching. And that's gonna give you about an eight and a half inch washcloth. So you're gonna continue to do green and white for 10 rows of stripes or 20 rows of stitching. Continue to do it exactly the same. Two singles, two doubles, two singles, two doubles. Then you turn, always chain one on this one because you're going to want to stitch in the very first stitch. And then when you turn, two doubles, two singles, two doubles, two singles all the way across. Then you change colors for two rows so that you'll have 10 stripes or 20 rows. 10 stripes of color, 20 rows of stitching. So I've completed my washcloth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now I added an extra row of green because I wanted a green at the top and the bottom. And so mine's going to measure a little over eight and a half inches. I just want, it's, I was just making it and I thought it looked better. You can do it either way. That'd be a total of 22 rows instead of 20 rows. Both are fine, whatever you want to do. What I want to show you is this edge. And this is where we changed colors and we have our rows of um, where we carried over our yarn. Don't panic, we're going to stitch over that. So we're gonna take our contrasting color and you can do it in green or white if you want to. I'm just doing it in red because I'm trying to keep it elfish or Christmassy. And again, you can do this all in one color or you can do it in lots of different colors. It's a pretty basic washcloth pattern. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up into this corner. This is our side where we're going to weave in, and we're going to do that first. Not weave in, but uh, stitch over. I used the wrong term there. So we're going to go up in this corner. We're going to attach our red yarn. There we go. And now what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet down the side. And single crocheting down these sides of stitches can be a little bit difficult to know where to place your stitches. And I always try to go in a stitch, not a hole. If you go in this hole, it won't look bad, but you'll have, you might have a big hole there and it might pull. And so what I try to do is uh, go in the sides of the stitches. And when I'm going through the side, it's just kind of eyeballing it. And what I tried to do is put about three stitches in the end of each of the color rows and um, just to kind of make it even and I wanted it to have the red and the green on the other one to have a really nice presence so that it's really seen and so I was just putting my stitches really close together making sure that I go around and catch all those edges where we carried our yarn and you can see when we grab those edges and carry our yarn uh, and when then we stitch over it, you're not going to be able to see that. And so it makes a nice, neat and tidy washcloth. And so we'll do this all the way down this first side of our washcloth. And a lot of times we try to spread our stitches out a little bit, but on this particular project, I really suggest that you put your single crochets nice and close together 
so that you have a nice, neat edge. So we're going to single crochet all the way down to this corner. So we uh, single crocheted all the way down this edge and we're at this corner. And what we're going to do at the corner is we're going to place three single crochets right in that corner. And what that does is it gives us a nice smooth uh, uh, movement around the corner. And we're at the bottom now so we can put all our stitches in those chains that move across. And we'll do the same thing on this corner. We'll put three single crochets and then we'll work up the side the same way over here that we did over here. And then we'll single crochet in the stitches across and join back to our first corner. So single crochet, three single crochets in the corner, single crochet across, three single crochets in this corner, single crochet up, three single crochets in this corner. And then we'll do a single crochet across and we'll put three single crochets in this corner and join. So we single crocheted with our red all the way around the edges of our washcloth. And I really like this bright color of red with the green and white stripes. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to make um, a tab like this one has. And this is just so that you can hang it up to dry. Now, if you want to hang it up on the faucet or something larger, you may need to chain more than 12. But we're just going to be chaining 12. It's up to you. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then all you need to do is go right back in that stitch and make a slip stitch. Then we're going to cut off and tie off. Whoops, there we go. And then we're going to use our needle and weave that end in. Now I already weaved the other ends in um, to tidy it up, but to weave in this, one thing to remember when you're weaving in your ends is make sure you don't weave your red or another color in your green or white. You want to stay in your color. So we're just going to weave in, go one way, pull that yarn a little bit, I need a longer tail on that one. <laughs> there we go, silly old thing. All right, and then what I do, let me move that one out of the way there so you can see. I go in and I stitch one direction, then I go back and I stitch the other direction. And I think that holds it really nice because it has to turn before it can come out. I'm gonna clip that off. This one I should have, uh, left a longer tail and I didn't but we'll do try to do the same thing we're gonna go there we go one way and then we'll turn there we go and go the other pull that down snug it down and now I have a wonderful set of washcloths that I can give to my friend for Christmas I think she's really going to like these, and I think you're really going to like making them. Now remember, you can make them in any color. You can make them solid. You can make them in spring colors, any colors that you want. I just call them Christmas candy stripe because I did them in Christmas colors.